This is a teardown of a Hummingbird TCR ID1 fish finder. This one's designed a little differently than the LCR 3004 I did. I've already started taking this one apart just for the sake of time. There's a couple screws holding this uh, mounting plate down and then the connector was screwed into the mounting plate through these screws. Also some screws holding this down which I believe Hmm, maybe not. Oh, all right, I see. It's just a gasket plate for the uh, wiring harness to go through. The uh, housing screws, they went a little bit of a different route where these are captive screws, which are nice. They are still plastic. There are screws of threading for plastic though. Kind of a strange way to do their pass through compared to the um, LCR 3004. I'm not sure why they did it this way when the other ones were done differently. And basically molded into the frame. Oh, that's a gnarly screw. Like this is a piece of copper or brass. Yeah, they just made a hole in the thing and then pushed it through. Which I suppose worked. I mean, because these things are exposed to the water, I wouldn't imagine that they would have done it this way if it was going to allow water ingress, or at least meaningful water ingress. That connector was just passed through the back. I guess it probably would have cost them more to uh, put this piece in as part of the injection molding process. Looks like this time instead of uh, using a metal bracket to hold the piezoelectric speaker down, they used a chunk of PCB material. These are some stubborn screws. I'm surprised they didn't go a simpler route because you'd think they could just put some epoxy on this and lay it down. But this particular speaker has a groove in it, so that would cause a problem. Also, I wonder if maybe they had problems with these failing and they felt that they needed to put them in in a way that was repairable. So that's the back housing. This board's a little bit more chip populated than the other one. Got a couple large chips. Let's see here. I used a lot of different size screws in this thing too. <laughs> Between number one Phillips, number two Phillips, and uh, I think it was T10 Torx. Not sure why companies do that. It'd be nice if they just stuck to one size, especially if it was uh, all Torx, because those are my personal favorite screws to work with. It's hard to mess them up unless they used really, really weak metal, or you're just being careless. Alrighty. Another wire. Oh, let's see. Got a little pin header there. That's kind of cool. Hmm. It's kind of a shame they didn't use these pins for the uh, for the buttons too. But I guess they would have had to extend the board. Kind of neat how this is a slot on nod module. Also, this has a more primitive card edge connector than used to nowadays. I assume that's so they could bulk program these or program faster, just slot them into their machine. Which is interesting because I didn't really see any uh, connectors on the um, 
the LCR 3004 3, unit. I must have flashed the chips before installing them. Zoom into those chips. Guessing it's another thing I won't be able to look up, unfortunately. Let's see here. 40, triple I, and then dash I. Yeah, that's another another oddball specialty. Oh, actually, I'm gonna, I think those might be ones. Four zero one 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 dash one. Hmm. Yeah, that's not not something I'm gonna be able to figure out probably. Check this tech ID dash IC what that will tell me. Hmm. Yeah, there's no good no good results unfortunately. Let's see what that maybe I can look up that Hyundai chip. I'm wondering if maybe that's like a memory chip of some sort to store the programming or settings. Standard SRAM, 2KX8, I am not sure, 100 nanoseconds, <laughs> 2048 words. Well, not much to see there. Another LM339N, same as that other board had. Sadly forgot already what it was, but it's, I had to look it up again. Another um, quad comparator. I'm guessing since that's a component that was on both boards, that might have something to do with how the um, ultra ultrasonic transducer works. But this one's definitely newer. Got a lot of surface mount components. The other one was completely devoid of any surface mount components. It was all through hole. And it looks like they put all the through hole stuff on top. And then... Um, Surface mount and bottom. Be kind of interesting to see what order they had to do this in, especially since you got these pins sticking through the board for the uh, connector. Hmm. These look like they might have some solder on them. So I don't know. That that's above my head. I uh, have watched some interesting videos on how they do wave soldering and stuff on uh, modern stuff. Pretty crazy. Wonder how much of this was hand soldered though, or if it was all automated since because of the surface mount stuff. But looks like I got another Texonic display. Be interesting to see if this one's backlit. Zoom out just a little, I suppose. I'm kind of surprised this one needs this plastic bracket, but I'm guessing it must have been like a spacer to separate the display from the board, the main control board. That's a lot heavier. Same deal. This one has another little aluminum overlay. And it looks like... Hmm. 
Maybe that other one was backlit. And this tape, I think, is covering up some lights. Oh. Hmm. I gotta look a little closer. Yeah, those are incandescent lights. Interesting. Based on the way the tape is put over these lights, oops, um, I'm guessing these displays must have been backlit. I've never used these before and don't really fish, so I honestly wouldn't know. <laughs> but looks like there is a plastic light guide under the display. So that would almost make me think that behind the display there's well, I guess it still would have to be like a diffuser or something. And this display, this was the top originally. This display has some stuck pixels, or I don't know what the story is with that. If that's like permanent stuff that's supposed to be there. Pushing on it doesn't really seem to affect them. And this thing's pretty stout. I almost wonder if there's like a thick piece of glass over it or something. But these must not be dot matrix displays because those are definitely not pixels. Those are like predefined shapes. Huh. Interesting. Hmm. Can't tell. No, I think it's a separate. I was going to say it almost looks like this housing is all clear and then they painted over it, but can't tell for sure. No, there's definitely something separate there. That's strange. They uh, molded the internals using clear plastic and then the front face is just a plastic shell that goes over the internal housing. The button module on this one's a little different. It's not one of those flat stick-on style ones. Interesting to see what's under here. Oh, some of these screws are just ever so slightly stripped. I wonder if that means somebody's been in here to repair it, or if maybe there's just some problem with during the manufacturing where they had to take it apart and put it back together. They use tactile switches on this one. That's kind of neat. Oh, and there's some uh, red LEDs between this, the switches. Kind of cool. Oh, look at that. This is even branded. Alps from Japan. So they must have farmed this out, gave them the specs, and said, build this, please. <laughs> And then I've got a little plastic holding piece. Oh, interesting. So the front the front buttons don't go all the way through the front. There's two different sets of membranes. This uh, membrane is sandwiched between the um, inner clear plastic housing and the outer black plastic shell. See if I can pry it apart. I'm kind of curious on how well that's glued together. Probably don't have the right tools for a destructive teardown, but no. I think it's glued in the corners. Because really, the outer housing doesn't matter if the internal housing is watertight. Yeah, I don't have the right tools in on hand, and I don't really want plastic pieces exploding in my face. But the other thing I forgot to mention that I noticed when tearing down the other unit was they have a, a little treat bag in there, some desiccant that you're not supposed to eat. <laughs> so moisture ingress must be an issue, despite the gasketing they do around the the speaker and around the switch switches and the data lines that come in but yeah this one went a little longer than the other one but i think that really 
covers anything of interest. I still kind of wonder what the story's with this. Not sure why there's two sets of what I'm assuming are processors. Just couldn't figure out what what they are by looking up the part numbers and stuff. That's definitely storage. That one is easy to figure out. <laughs> so, yeah. Thanks for watching.